Magnificat is a really beautiful little part of Scripture in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verses 46 to 55, where Our Lady breaks into verse. It really has profound meaning for our spiritual lives if we pay attention to it. So I want to teach you how to pray it in Latin and English, as well as give you some things to think about, uh, mostly from the saints. So the scene is right after the Annunciation, right after the message of the Father through the angel Gabriel, where she said yes to God's plan. She said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it done unto me according to thy word. And immediately then she conceived of the word in her womb. The word became flesh. She gave him flesh and blood. And our salvation was begun. And then her thought was one of charity. She thought of her cousin Elizabeth, who she was just told was also with child. So she journeyed in haste to go visit her and to help her since she was older. And on her journey, picture her contemplating God inside her, in her womb. And who am I that the Lord would do such wonderful things in me and for us. Just the joy and the contemplation. And then she arrives, and Elizabeth has this reaction where she gets a revelation. She knows what has happened to Mary, and she's literally inspired, that is, has the Spirit within her. She's inspired by the Holy Spirit, and she exclaims, Who am I? that the mother of my Lord should come to me from the moment that your greeting reached my ears, the babe in my womb leapt for joy. That is John the Baptist in her womb. And Mary responds with the Magnificat. Magnificat, that word means it magnifies, and she's talking about her soul. So it refers to the first word in Latin of her poem here. And so these are the verses I'll give it to you in Latin and then English, verse by verse. So starting at verse 46, et ait Maria, and Mary said, magnificat anima mea dominum. My soul magnifies the Lord. Et exultavit spiritus meus in Deo salutari meo. And my spirit has rejoiced in God, my Savior. Quia respectsit humilitatem ancille sua, ecce enim ex hoc beatam medicent omnes generationes, because he has regarded the humility of his handmaid. In Greek, it's tes doulas autu, that is, a female slave. For behold, from henceforth, all generations shall call me blessed. Quia fecit mici magna qui potens est, et sanctum nomen eius. Because he that is mighty has done great things to me, and holy is his name. Et misericordia eius a progenie in progenies, Dementibus eum. And his mercy is from generation unto generations to them that fear him. Fecit potentiam in brachio suo, dispersit superbos mente cordis sui. He has shown might in his arm. He has scattered the proud in the conceit of their heart. Deposuit potentes de sede, et exaltavit humiles. He has put down the mighty from their throne and has exalted the humble. Esuriente simplevit bonis, et divites dimisit inanes. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent empty away. Sushepit Israel puerum suum, recordatus misericordiae sue. He has received Israel, his servant, being mindful of his mercy. 
sicut locutus est ad patres nostros, Abraham et semni eius in secula. As he has spoken to our fathers, to Abraham and to his seed forever. Literally, in secula, unto the ages. This is really amazing. So the first word, I think, is the best. I love that we call this the Magnificat, because that word really describes so much the, the essence of Our Lady's spirituality, that that is her response, is that word Magnificat really sums up this whole thing. And that is, it magnifies. What magnifies? Her soul magnifies what or whom? The Lord. My soul magnifies the Lord. Magnificat anima mea dominum. So she sees herself not really seeing herself, that she is like a magnifying glass to see through, to see what? See God. Don't look at her, look at God. Her job is to magnify the Lord, that the Lord shine through her, and by doing so shows his grace and his glory and his goodness and his beauty and his truth, that people look through her to see God, to magnify him. To, what do we use a magnifying glass for? To see something more clearly, to make it bigger in our eyes. It doesn't change it. You can't make God bigger. But to change it in the eyes of creatures, to be able to see him more clearly through the action of his grace in the world. And that's what she's celebrating, how good God is, and that he's using her that way, and she's rejoicing in being able to play that part. So she's rejoicing, as she says, verse 47, in God, her Savior, our Savior. And he has regarded the humility of the lowly state of his servant. She sees herself wanting to do only his will. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. And she says, from all generations, all generations shall call me blessed henceforth. So she basically prophesying that that, in fact, will be true, which it is obviously true. And anyone who doesn't want to call her the Blessed Mother is going against Scripture. Because he that is mighty, it's him who's doing it. It's his power, it's God's power, has done great things to her, and holy is his name. And his mercy is from generation unto generations to them that fear him, praising the mercy of God. He has shown might in his arm, he has scattered the proud in the conceit of their heart. The proud, the demons, etc., the rulers of this world in darkness on their thrones of folly and worldly glory that God was waiting for his moment to take them down and that they will all be taken down and this is the beginning of the end for them and of his great victory. He has put down the mighty from their throne and has exalted the humble. Jesus being who will be born in the middle of the night, in the middle of the country, in silence with no trumpets blaring and, and parades. And same thing with Mary to a poor husband and wife by the miraculous power of God of virgin birth. These poor people in who didn't even have room in the inn for them, out in the middle of nowhere. And yet it's through them that God is going to work these wonders and save the world. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent empty away. Uh, as Jesus says, the last shall be first and the first shall be last. He's going to reward the humble and the good people who don't go just fighting tooth and nail against others for their own benefit, but who try to do what is good and right and to help others and to not strive for all their happiness in this world, but in the next. He has received Israel, his servant, being mindful of his mercy as he has spoken to our fathers, to Abraham and to his seed forever. So she sees that it is the promise and the great promises of the Old Testament being fulfilled here, that through her, in her, finally, these covenants are come, going to come to fulfillment, the perfect covenant 
through Mary, who was first completely faithful by God's grace, by the cross of Christ, who makes her the Immaculate Queen, reaching through time this Jesus that is in now inside her to be born of her. This redemption has already now begun with this Annunciation and with these gifts that are now happening before her eyes, and she's rejoicing in this. St. Ambrose, regarding verses 46 to 47, so the beginning, the Magnificat, Anima mea dominum et exaltavit spiritus meus in Deo salutari meo, he commented, quote, Sit in singulis anima Mariae ut magnificent dominum, sit in singulis spiritus Mariae ut exultet in Deo. That is, let the soul of Mary ben, be in each individual soul, that he or she might magnify the Lord. May the Spirit of Mary be in each one of us, so that he or she may rejoice in God. So it's all of our jobs to follow Mary's guidance here, to follow her example, because in fact, this is what we are to be and how we are to do as well. And in the same vein, St. Elizabeth of the Trinity, a great Carmelite saint, one of my favorites, she said that she wanted to be the praise of his glory, referencing Ephesians 1.6 and Ephesians 1.14, where St. Paul says, unto the praise of the glory of his grace, in laudem gloriae gratiae sue, and unto the praise of his glory, in laudem gloriae ipsius. So the ipsius is emphatic of his very own glory. And that's what St. Elizabeth wanted to be. She wanted her whole life and her whole, her whole being to be unto the glory of his grace, unto his glory, the praise of his glory. So that, like that magnifying glass, everything that she does brings praise to the glory of God, to his goodness and to his grace. Thus she wrote, to a priest in letter 244 in October of 1905, quote, when you consecrate the host where Jesus, who alone is holy, will be incarnate, consecrate me with him as the victim of the praise of glory until all my aspirations, all my movements, all my actions pay homage to the Holy One. And again, in letter 294 in July of 1906, as a child might ask her father, I ask you at Mass to consecrate me as a host of praise of God's glory. It's a beautiful way to think of Mass, especially the offertory, to offer yourself there and in the consecration that, to ask that you be consecrated internally to God to become the praise of his glory. And hence, Lucia of Fatima, in her book, Calls, in pages 69 to 70, she wrote, We were created and chosen by God to be the praise of his eternal glory. To be the praise of his glory, this is the highest purpose for which God could have destined us. To achieve this, we must all give ourselves fully to the Lord in a life of faith, hope, and love. So may we all be inspired by Our Lady. Ask her to help us to do this, that we may follow in her footsteps. Magnificat anima mea dominum, et exultavit spiritus meus in Deo salutari meo, quia respectsit humilitatem ancille sue, Ecce enim ex hoc beatam medicent omnes generationes, quia fecit mici magna qui potens est, et sanctum nomen eius, et misericordia eius a progenie in progenies timentibus eum, fecit potentiam in brachio suo, dispersit superbos mente cordis sui. Deposuit potentes de sede, et exaltavit humiles. Esurientes implevit bonis, et divites dimisit inanes. Suscepit Israel puerum suum, 
recordatus misericordia sua. Sicut locutus est ad patres nostros, Abraham et semini eius in secula. Gloria Patri et Filio et Spiritui Sancto, sicut erat in principio et nunc et semper et in secula seculorum. Amen. God bless et oremus pro invicem.